As with any lifestyle change or physical exercise program, consult your physician before you begin your yoga practice. If you are pregnant, discuss your yoga practice with your yoga instructor. As your pregnancy progresses, you will need to modify or avoid certain poses. Move at your own pace and modify the poses as needed in order to maintain alignment and easy breathing in every pose. If you feel any discomfort, dizziness, or pain during your practice, either modify the pose so that you are comfortable or take a few moments to rest. It is very important that you listen to your body and practice yoga in the manner that is the safest and most comfortable for you. Namaste. Hello, my name is Diane. Welcome to this 40-minute Hatha Yoga Flow. Sitting in a tall, straight, seated place, your legs arranged comfortably, one foot in front of the other if you like, hands down on the knees to help ground your energy, sitting with a tall, straight spine, relaxed face, quiet shoulders, just breathing nice and deep into your tummy. Moving into Tibetan flower breath, fingers to shoulders, elbows lifted to horizontal, long straight back, inhaling up, expanding and opening to receive the sunlight, exhale, closing the flower down for the night. At your own breath's pace, inhaling up, breathe, soft shoulders, long neck, exhale down, keeping those elbows lifted, long spine. Inhale up, calm face, feel the grounding below, exhale down, fingertips to shoulders, quiet neck. Inhale up, draw the sun in, exhale, close it into your body, draw the energy within. Inhale up, only doing as many as feels comfortable for you. Exhale down, feeling your core body growing in every direction, lifting and breathing, exhaling, gently sinking out, hands return to the knees, this time palms up to receive the energy, forefingers touch thumbs to lock it inside of you, just breathing, feeling the heat building in your body simply because you're breathing on a deeper level. Relax your shoulders and your face. Releasing your right leg out to the side. You can either have it bent or straight, depending on the comfort of your hip and your knee. Toes point towards the ceiling. Inhale to draw open your left arm. Reach out and a big rainbow arch over into the side stretch. And again, if it's not comfortable, bend that leg. You can look up or straight ahead or down, finding a nice straight arm on the top to access that shoulder socket, but try not to squeeze your shoulders around your ears. Even as the fingers reach in one direction, the shoulder drops down in the other. Breathing and opening, feeling your ribs expanding, inhaling to exit the posture, exhaling to float the hand down. Release the shoulders, release the legs, drawing your right ankle across your left knee. And if it's comfortable, you can move that left foot in closer towards you, bending the leg. The closer the left knee moves towards you, the more of a stretch you're putting in the right hip, knee, and ankle. Breathe into it. Long straight spine, shoulders squeezing back a little bit, but relax down away from the ears. You can just support yourself on the hands, any way that's comfortable for your wrists. Releasing out, shaking out the legs, drumming them on the floor if you like, and sitting up very tall and straight so you're at a 90 degree angle, body to legs. Not propping yourself on the hands, but using your core body to lift yourself tall and straight, chin in neutral, face is quiet, and then gently releasing the legs whenever you need to. You can always release more fully by going into a gentle forward fold. You can widen those knees apart to give your shoulders room to sink down. Let the head sink down, the face is quiet. Breathing into your back, letting your spine open, 
rounding forwards, chin sinks into chest, face is quiet. And you can roll out of there whenever you want. Adjusting your legs into butterfly if that's good for you. Soles together, knees sinking down. If that's not comfortable, you can go back into cross legs or sit any way that feels good for you with a long straight spine. Hands moving up into Namaste Mudra, palms pressing together, thumbs against the sternum, the chest plate, and just breathe. Gently sinking out, opening up to the other side. What we do on one side, we do on the other in yoga. Hand against the leg, drawing open the bow, big inhale as you arch over to the side. Again, don't let your head just sort of flop around. And if it's comfortable, you can have that long leg. Feel the shoulder rolling back on the top, the ribs opening up, breathing into it. Try not to slump your lower back out behind you. Your back should be flat through the lower regions, rolling open your heart towards the ceiling and the upper regions. Breathing and staying only as long as is comfortable you can come out whenever you want. If your neck gets tired one way, take yourself down a little. Squeeze tummy in. Inhale out. Exhale. Float those hands down. Again, shaking out the legs. Make sure the ankle feels safe. Crossing over. Drawing in the right knee. And again, adjusting that long spine. Chin sinks down. Shoulders roll back. Leaning on the hands. And gently breathing into the stretch through the hip, the knee, and the ankle. Anytime you need to release yourself, make sure that you do. You listen to your body before you listen to any teacher. Your body knows its limits. You have to learn to recognize them. Drawing the knees a little closer towards you. Hands behind you, the fingers either pointing straight towards your buttocks or straight out behind you, moving into the table. Careful with the shoulders and the wrists here. If this is too much for you, you can just take yourself right back down again. Chin stays in the chest for the safety of the neck. And make sure that your knees don't fall apart. You can imagine you're holding a red rubber ball between your knees, and you don't want it to drop. Ankles under knees, hands under shoulders. Exhaling yourself out whenever you're ready. Gently sinking forwards, hands around the knees, walk the heels closer in and round your spine. And just completely let your hands take the weight. The arms are long and straight and relaxed, and you can feel your shoulder blades sliding apart across your back. Don't let your shoulders bunch up around the ears. Sink them down, not forcibly, but in a relaxed, open place. Squeeze tummy in. Use your core strength, if you like, or use the arms to help draw you up. Sitting tall and straight again in the butterfly and then holding an invisible tree, leaning back to work the abdominal muscles. You'll feel the brakes come on automatically. You won't be able to lie down completely on the floor. Just breathing into it. Anytime you get tired, remember it's up to you to come out. If you want a little more, you can gently twist from side to side, getting into the side abdominal muscles one way and then back to center exhaling to the other side keep the shoulders relaxed longish spine even as you're curling back back to center again strong tummy inhale bringing yourself back up if you need to haul yourself up with your arms of course you're going to do that gently exhaling forwards and down make sure your legs are comfy if you need an alternative posture you can again just open the legs out with the soles of the feet on the floor and the knees bent. Breathing into that open back, letting the neck relax, the arms relax. Hmm. Anytime you want to come out, you just roll yourself out, release those legs. Adjusting yourself on the mat, and then rolling yourself down one vertebra at a time. You can hold the legs if you want to for support or give yourself a little bit more work and just let yourself sink down, reaching the hands forwards. Try to keep the shoulders relaxed. 
breathing one vertebra at a time, all the way down, hands to tummy, head to the floor. Make sure that your hair is not interfering with a nice long neck on the floor. And you can go back into butterfly here if you like, with the soles of the feet together. If it's too strenuous on your hips, you can always lie with your knees together and your feet a little bit wider apart as an alternative posture. Hands on the tummy, feeling the movement of your belly as you breathe, softening your face. Big inhales into the belly, the ribs, the heart. Big exhale, releasing all the air, all the tension. Big inhale into the tummy, the ribs, the heart. Exhale, let your body melt down as you breathe. Hands under the thighs to help draw the knees together and up into the chest. Hands on the knees to rock the back. And be generous with it. Bring the elbows all the way down to the floor. Turn the knees in circles if that feels nice. Ensure that the neck stays long on the ground. You can move the knees in opposite circles. Just play with massaging your lower back on the floor. Gently opening the feet as wide apart as the mat or even wider if that's comfortable and letting the knees sink down towards the left side. Breathing, relaxing, turning your head out to the right. And if you prefer, you can open your arms out wide straight across at shoulder height and breathe in your knees and feet apart, twist. For those of you who are quite flexible and the right knee is close to the ground, You can always go into a variation of putting your left ankle on top of your right knee, but move slowly and carefully, and if there's any discomfort in that knee whatsoever, you take yourself back out again. Come to a gentler level. Find the place where you can breathe. Anytime you want to come out, squeeze the tummy in, inhale, draw the knees up, and you can just rock straight over to the other side if you want turning the head, opening the arms. If you feel like you need to release your back between going from one side to the other, you can always draw the knees into your heart, gently circle the knees again, and then put your feet back to wide apart as the mat and sink the knees to the other side. Relax your face, feel that cheekbone pressing down towards the floor, opening the neck, opening the spine, As the knees sink down to the side, you'll feel your lower back starting to move away from the ground. As your body opens, your back will sink down towards the floor as well. Opening the knees back to center, squeeze tummy, draw them into your heart. Gently release yourself from the posture if you need to. And just exhale, forehead up to the knees, reaching down the insides of the legs, holding on to the soles of the feet. And if you can, Head returns to the floor. Your heels are directly above your knees. And if you can't hold your feet, you can hold lower down, either the calves or behind the knees. Make sure that neck is long. Press your lower back and your tailbone down into the floor. And as you breathe, you'll feel your knees moving away from you on the inhale. And you can draw the feet down on the exhale. Releasing from that window posture any time you need to. Gently sinking your feet down to the floor. If you need to release further, you can draw one knee in, stretch that leg out, hands behind the knee, flex the foot, send the heel up towards the ceiling. You can slide the hands further up the leg, but keep the head gently on the floor. Squeeze the knee into your heart. Gently releasing. Moving to the other side again, right knee into the heart, flex the foot, stretch, just gently exploring the range of motion through that leg. Don't let your head pick up off the floor though. Placing both feet down, moving the heels closer in towards you, nice long neck, hands by the hips, gently starting to roll yourself into spinal lift. So your knees should be right above your heels. Make sure your toes aren't turning outwards or turning inwards. Your toes should all be parallel, pointing towards the end of the mat. Breathing into your spine, keeping that neck nice and long. 
and only rolling as high as is comfortable. You can come out any time you want, one vertebra at a time, rolling from the top back down to the bottom of the spine. This is a back arch, so try to neutralize the lower back by squeezing the pubic bone up towards the ceiling, tucking the tummy in. And as you roll down, try to maintain that tucked posture through the pelvis so your buttocks are the last thing to hit the floor, gently drawing the knees in, forehead up towards the knees in a counter pose. And if your head doesn't stay up by itself, if it falls back in a straight line, just interlink the fingers around the back of the head to hold the neck safely. If you want more, if the head stays forwards by itself, you can reach the hands forwards. And if you really want more, you can inhale and send the heels and the hands, if you like, up towards the ceiling. So there's always a deeper place or a gentler place that you can go to. Choose the level where you can breathe, where you feel good, and you can take yourself out any time you want. Gentle breath, holding behind the knees, swinging the feet over the face, and rocking up into the boat. Holding behind the knees, balancing on your two sit bones, and finding the level that suits you. You can hold the legs, roll the shoulders back and down, drop that shin to neutral. Oh, if you want more work, again, you can reach the hands straight forwards. Coming out whenever you need to, rocking around, moving onto the hands and the knees into the cat pose. Toes tuck under to stretch out those tight feet. Make sure your arms and your thighs are straight up and down. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the head under, squeeze the tailbone under. Inhaling to cow, trying to touch the back of your head to your tailbone. Exhale to cat, squeeze out the breath, strong tummy, push into your hands. Inhale to cow, push into the hands, but open the heart to the front. Exhaling up, tuck the head under, forehead tries to touch pubic bone. Inhaling down to a neutral spine, reaching up through the left hand, moving into a beautiful windmill cat. Try not to collapse through the bottom shoulder. Keep some space between the ear and the shoulder, pressing into the hand and adjusting your head for comfort. Sweeping down whenever you want, squeezing the tummy, inhaling up to the other side, feeling that lovely twist through the torso. You can look up if your neck likes that. If it's too pinchy or strenuous, look straight out to the side or down at the hand on the floor. And again, exhale yourself out whenever you want, untuck toes, and if your knees can handle it, sink yourself down to the child pose. You can have your head stacked on your hands or your fists, leave the hands released ahead of you, or go into classical child with the hands beside the ankles, elbows bent out to the side and drifting down towards the floor. This allows the shoulders to just ooze forwards over the knees like honey dripping off the end of a spoon. Make sure your forehead is on the floor. If you need to turn your head to one side, that means you've got too much stress in the back of the neck and you need to put your hands or your fists underneath your forehead. Breathe and relax in your child pose. And then gently sweep the hands to the front end of the mat. Squeeze your tummy in and gradually roll yourself up into sitting on the heels. If this hurts your knees or your feet, please don't stay in this place. Sitting in your hero, roll your shoulders back and down. Inhale all the way up, reach up. Palms together, sit all the way back down, buttocks to heels, hands come down to the floor. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, forward fold, forehead returns to the ground. If you need to have your hands under you for support, that's fine. Sweep your hands forward and ahead of you. Look at your hands, the shoulder width apart, scoot through. All the way down, hands under shoulders. If you need to adjust yourself on your mat so that your face is on your mat, make sure that you do so. As you see here, it's good to learn the territory of your mat. So if you ever wind up in a very snug yoga class with a lot of people, you're not going to accidentally be kicking your neighbor or crawling onto your other neighbor's mat. Again, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, hands float down to heart level. Take yourself up, inhale, up. 
Exhale, draw yourself back down, buttocks to heels, hands beside the ankles, inhale to lengthen, exhale to float yourself down, forehead to the mat, sweep your hands forwards, so you should know you have enough room to go into cobras if your hands have about a foot of space between your fingertips and the end of your mat. Inhaling into cobra, squeeze your tummy in. Make sure your lower back feels safe here. Legs are together, big toes touch. Exhaling down, push into the hands, round your spine into angry cat, back into your child pose. And again, strong tummy, inhale. Draw those arms in without dragging the mat along with you. All the way back up to sitting nice and tall and straight in your hero. Inhaling, stand on the knees, hands together, palms together. Exhale, sit yourself back down. Hands flow down the center line of your body all the way to the ankles. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Again, if you feel more comfortable with hands under your shoulders doing that, go right ahead. Inhale, send the hands forward. Exhale, scoot through. Try to keep your chest low. Caterpillar your way down onto your tummy. Send your chin forwards. Roll those shoulders back and down. Don't use your arms to prop yourself up. Exhaling down. Round your spine. Nice big inhale. Exhale to child. Again, using your abdominal muscles to draw yourself slowly up into sitting one vertebra at a time, shoulders roll back, head emerges last, sitting in that hero, then inhale, stand up tall, hands up, palms together, sinking down, straight back here, sitting directly above your pelvis, exhaling, forward fold, forehead comes to the floor, Nice breath into sweeping the arms forward. Spread out those fingers. Scoot yourself through. Legs together. Hands are under the shoulders. Don't let the elbows be resting on the floor. Inhale. You can take yourself a little higher if you want to, but careful with the back. Exhale yourself down out of your cobra. Tucking toes under. You can go up to downward facing dog to release yourself from the cobra. If it's too much for you, go down to child pose. So your hands are where they were before, your feet are pelvis width apart, hiding the heels behind the feet. Look at your toes, but the top of your head is pointing in the direction of your hands. Stepping through into the lunge, right leg forward. If you need to grab that foot or move yourself there as best you can, sometimes it takes practice to just smoothly step through. Make sure that shin's straight up and down. Hands can rest on the floor lightly or on the thigh. Make sure your hips are square. The back leg is parallel to the mat. And get a nice distance between your knees. Going into the twist, prayer twist. Elbow across opposite knee. Fingers point towards your nose. You can look up over that right shoulder if you like. So it's a left arm across the right knee if you're a little confused. Make sure that your neck is comfortable here as well. Don't let your hips press backwards. You want to keep that pressing forward action through the hips. If it's not comfortable, you can always find your own variation. Tuck the back toe under, squeeze in the tummy, step yourself back into that dog. Nice long straight spine. Don't let your head flop down. You're looking at your toes, but your neck is in line with your spine. Stepping through on the other side, left leg forward. Again, open up your heart, roll the shoulders back. You can put your hands higher up if you like, onto the thigh. Square up those hips. Make sure that your knee is above your heel. If your knee is moving towards the toes or beyond, you're endangering your ligaments. Crossing into the twist. Right elbow over left knee, palms together, fingers point towards the nose. Adjust your head for comfort, breathing into it. You can lever that elbow against the thigh to twist yourself deeper if you like. Releasing hands to the floor, tuck toe under, squeeze tummy, pick up knee, inhale, step back into your dog. Come up on the balls of your feet, knees down, unhook those toes, and settle yourself down again into your child to rest. If you want to stay longer in your dog, that's entirely up to you. As long as you can breathe and you're comfortable, the dog can become a resting pose as your practice advances. 
But if you need just to sink down and relax, then do so. Rolling yourself back up into your hero. Get those shoulders relaxed. Make sure you're comfy. Drop that chin down a little bit. Breathe into your body. Make sure those ankles and feet and knees are safe. Tucking the toes under. This one can get pretty intense, so watch yourself, only if it's comfortable. You saw how I pulled those little pinky toes around, so they're in alignment as well. Sitting on the heels, make sure that your ankles and your feet and your knees feel safe. Breathing into it, relax your shoulders. Coming out any time you want, you can just stand right up on the knees, carefully unhook your toes. And your hands, leaning back now, your hands can be either fingers pointing towards toes or rotated out behind. Moving into gentle variations for the camel. Widen your knees apart a little bit. Pressing into the hands, gently allowing the buttocks to leave the heels. Only going as high as is comfortable. There should be no pain in any of your joints. As you get more open, you'll be able to walk the hands forwards to the heels and open into the full expression of the camel with the head back. That's hard on the neck, so watch yourself there. Breathing, palms onto the soles. You must have a very strong neck to allow yourself to go back into the camel. You must have a very open body. If your arms are not straight up and down and you're leaning way back, you could fall right on the back of your head, so be very careful. If your head is back, keep it back. Walk the hands back, put the buttocks on the heels, press the heart forward, and only let the head forward when gravity takes it forwards. This is to protect your neck. Moving back into child to recover from whatever level of camel you attained. Gently breathing. Let your body sink. You rest as much as you need to during your practice. Don't try to force yourself beyond your safe limits. Again, rolling back up, shoulders back. Opening your knees and feet apart. Moving yourself into sitting, cross-legged, hands on the knees, nice tall spine, shoulders roll back and down, faces quiet, gently breathing. If you need to release your back some more, it's a good idea after the camel or an intense back bend to lie back down. So one vertebra at a time, head on the floor, draw in those knees, rock out your back from side to side. You can let your head turn with the knees or opposite to the knees, if you like. Taking in that right knee, extending the left leg. This is a more advanced twist. This is one knees twist. You must ensure that your shoulder stays on the floor on the right side and ensure that your right foot touches the ground. The knee is not necessarily going to get down as far as it is here. You can draw it up towards the armpit if you're quite flexible, or if this is not comfortable, slide the knee down away from you. Turning the head away from the knee, making sure that both shoulders are on the ground. If this is not comfortable for you, if you need to come out, you slide the hand underneath the knee and help to press yourself back out. You don't want to just lift from your hips here. You want to help push that leg back out. Otherwise, you can strain yourself. So carefully adjusting yourself out, squeezing that knee into your heart, lengthening through, just breathing into any tightness, drawing in the two knees. If you want to rock out your back here, turn the knees in circles to release the lower back. That's a very good idea. An option is, of course, to go into a two-knees twist if you don't like your one-knees twist, where you have both knees in your heart, and they both go over. Otherwise, going back into your one-knees twist, you can see here I'm adjusting myself to go deeper into the twist by tucking that bottom hip further back underneath me, bending that bottom leg to give myself the leverage to do so. That's fairly advanced. Be careful with your spine. Make sure that your shoulder is flat on the floor, turning your head away from the bent knee, adjusting the height of the knee. If it's too intense on your back, you can just slide that knee down away from the shoulder. And if you need to come out again, hand under the knee to help press yourself back out in a safe manner. Breathe into anything that feels tight. There should not be any pain here. Feel the stretch across your buttock and your thigh. 
into your beautiful long spine, turning the head back to center as you plan to emerge, pushing that knee back up. Don't just draw it up with the hips. Squeeze it into the heart. Make sure that it's released. Sometimes you can have a strong reaction coming out of the one knee twist. Be careful. Rocking yourself free. Exhaling, forehead up to the knees. Press your tailbone into the floor. Taking a hold of your feet from the outsides of the legs. There's space between your knees for your forehead to fit. Try to make yourself small here in your cannonball. Relax your shoulders. Press that tailbone down in the opposition of the lift. And any time you want to come out, you can just exhale yourself down. Let your feet flow down to the floor. Hands on the tummy. If you need to stretch out, do so. Moving into Shavasana. Relaxing. Spreading out the shoulders. Widening the feet. Your hands at about a 45 degree angle away from the hips with the palms facing the ceiling. If that feels a little strange or vulnerable or uncomfortable, you can put your hands on your tummy. Make sure your neck is long. Your eyes can close if that feels safe for you. Snuggling your lower back into the ground. If your lower back feels at all pinchy, you can bend your knees, let your knees rest together, widen your feet apart. And just breathe into your beautiful, relaxing, open body. Feel the energy moving through you. Feel the breath sweeping through you like a warm wind. Every muscle of your body getting softer and heavier, melting down into the floor.
releasing yourself from Shavasana, the corpse pose, feeling down into the hands and feet, wriggling those fingers and toes, turning your head from side to side. If you like, you can go into reclining butterfly, bringing the soles of the feet together, letting the knees open, and you can pick up the head if you like, interlock the fingers around the back of your head, stretch out the neck, squeeze those elbows together, basically moving any way you like. You can go into another twist. This is the Toonies twist. Just rocking yourself free from the gentle hold of the corpse pose and bringing yourself, when you're ready, up into sitting with a tall, straight spine. Hands resting on the knees, palms up, chin in neutral, face is quiet. Just breathing. Hmm. Draw the energy in through the palms. Capture the energy touching the finger to the thumb. Yanana Mudra, the seal of knowledge. Relax those shoulders. Notice the quality of your thoughts, the sensations in your muscles, the depth of your breath, feeling all the different aspects of yourself interweaving together in a beautiful tapestry. Thank you very much for coming to class. Namaste.